Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. In this tutorial, we'll create a basic video to see how Canon Live works from beginning to end. Now we're familiar with the interface, we should be able to understand exactly how it works and how to export our first video. All the clips I used in this video, as well as the audio, will be freely available if you want to replicate the steps here. You can download them from the link in the description. Prepare the project. First, we'll create a folder structure. This is the one I use, but you can adapt it to whatever you want it to be. I'll create a main project folder called Tutorial Project. Inside this one, I'll create a Sources folder. Now, I'll just take all my audio, video and image files and move them in this Sources folder. Then, we'll open Caden Live and create a new project. I'll select 1080p60 as a preset and tell it to save everything in my Tutorial Project folder. I'll leave the rest as is. Now I'll save my project for the first time, just to create the project file. I'll click File, Save and select where I want to save it, which is in my Tutorial Project folder. Now our project is created and ready to go. Add clips to the clip bin. Now we need to add the clips we want to use in our video. I'll open my Sources folder and drag everything from here to the clip bin in Caden Live. All clips are added at the same level, which is not great, so I'll create a folder in the clip bin called Video and drag all video clips in there to tidy it up. Note that I could also have created a folder called Video in my Sources folder and drag this one directly in the clip bin so that my folder structure would already have been created in Caden Live. Drag the first clip to the timeline. Let's start with the editing. We'll take our first clip here and drag it to a video track. I typically start by adding the first clip on the bottom track, so we can add stuff to it easily later if we need to. Now this clip is a bit too long, and there is a part at the end that I don't want to use, so I'll remove it by grabbing the handle at the end of the clip and dragging its length to where I want it to start. If I wanted to be more precise, I could also use the Cut tool and click on the clip to cut it in two. I could then remove the part that I don't want to use. Add a second clip and a transition. Now we're going to add the second clip and add a transition between them. Just drag the second clip to another video track. Note that we could add it right after our first clip on the same track, but this would prevent us from adding a transition since the clips don't have any overlap. This clip has some images I don't want at the beginning, so I'll just seek with the playhead to where I want it to cut and use the cut tool, which you can bring with the X key on your keyboard, and cut it. I'll remove the excess footage by switching back to the Select tool, accessible with the S key, selecting that footage and pressing Delete to remove it. Don't forget to switch back to the Select tool or you might end up cutting your clips instead of moving or selecting them. To add a transition, we need an overlap between the two clips, a space where my second clip and my first are played at the same time. I'll just drag the second clip a little bit over the first one. In this space, we'll add a transition. Either click on the lower left corner of the second clip, or right click and select Add Transition. By default, you'll get a dissolved transition, which means that the first clip will fade out as the second fades in. The length of the transition is simply the length of the overlap area, by default, but you can resize the transition to use more or less time. Be careful on the zoom level in your project though. The length of the transition that is displayed in the timeline will seem to increase visually when you zoom in, so you might end up with a very short or very long transition if you're not careful to which zoom level you're using. Always try to add transitions from the same zoom level to keep their length consistent. Now, a dissolve is a bit boring. We want to add something with a bit more blank. To do that, we'll click on the dissolve transition in the timeline. In the properties panel, we'll see a drop-down menu. Click on it and select wipe. A wipe is a special transition that uses a shape to move from one clip to the other. Wipes are basically image files using grayscale, and we'll switch from the first clip to the second one by mapping the clips to the various levels of gray, thus giving the impression of movement. By default, the wipe will be a slide, but there are more options. We'll select a spiral wipe. Let's preview it in the monitor now. Some wipes will work better with specific clips, so you'll have to play with them to decide which one is better suited for each transition. You can also download some new wipes by clicking on the settings, add new wipes. If you feel like it, you can also create your own, but we'll get back to this. Add a logo. We'll now add a logo in the upper left corner. Since we want this logo to appear on top of every video clip, we need to position it on the top track. There are ways to place clips in a lower track and display them on top of others, but we'll see that later. 
By default, image clips have a fixed length, but we can change in the settings. Since we want that logo to appear for the whole video, we'll grab its right end and drag it to the end of the second clip. Now, in the project monitor, we can see that our logo is on top of everything, but it's too big and hides our content. We'll need to make it smaller. To do this, we'll apply the position and zoom effect. Click on the effects panel and search for position. We'll now drag that effect to our image clip in the timeline. Notice that in the properties pane, we now have the position and zoom effect. We'll set the zoom level to 25%. In the monitor, our logo has now been reduced in size, but it's not in the right position. We can either drag the red square in the middle to move our clip, or use the X and Y properties of the position and zoom effect to place it where we want. Let's drag it in the top left corner. Animate the logo. Now, that logo just pops in and out of existence. I'd like to add an effect to make it appear a bit more smoothly. We could add regular dissolved transitions or a wipe, but I'd like to make it look like it's zooming in and out. Let's click on our image clip and play with the position and zoom effect. You'll notice that this effect has its own small timeline that represents the length of the clip. On this timeline, we can add keyframes, which are time markers that have different zoom and position values. We'll move our existing keyframe a little down the line and add another one right at the start of the clip. This keyframe will take a zoom value of 200% and will position the image in the middle by using the position buttons in the position and zoom effect panel. This means that our image will start very big at 200% of its size and then shrink to 25% the value of our second keyframe, all while traveling to the top left corner. If we want to extend or shorten the duration of the zoom, we can just drag the second keyframe closer or farther from the first one. Now, to create the same effect in reverse at the end of the video, we'll need to create two more keyframes. One near the end of the image clip that has the same properties as the second keyframe, zoom 25% and position in the top left. This will tell the image clip to stay as is for the whole length of the interval between the two keyframes. Finally, we'll add a fourth one right at the end of the image clip and give it a 200% zoom level as well as centering it. Adding the audio and mastering the volume. That's it for the video part. Now we'll add some music. Just drag the audio clip to an audio track on the timeline. Audio works differently than video. Every audio clip will be played at the same time at any given second of the timeline, whether the audio track is placed on top or not. Our audio clip is a bit too long, so we'll cut it at the end and adjust it to be as long as our video. Let's preview it. You'll notice the sound is too high. We want this music to be a background track, so we don't want it to be as loud. To correct this, we'll just add a gain effect on the clip. Let's go to our effects panel and search for gain. We'll just drag this effect to our audio file. Know that we can also add that effect to the whole audio track so that every other audio clip we add has the same properties. By default, the gain will be at 100%. We want the sound to be lower, so we'll put it at 20%. Now, I'd like to add a fade out on the audio track. To do this, you can just put your mouse in the upper right corner of the audio clip until it becomes a hand, and then drag that to create a fade out. We can do the same thing for a fade in at the start of the audio clip. Rendering the video. Okay, let's preview the project. We've got our animated title with an audio fade in, then a transition between two clips, and finally our logo zooming out with the audio fading out as well. Now we need to render this video to have it as a watchable file. Let's click on Render. I'll select MP4 and boost the quality to the maximum. I'll also click More Options. We can see that there are a number of threads indicated here. This can be tweaked to use more cores of your CPU. I have a 6-core CPU, so that amounts to 12 threads, so I'll set it to 12. If you have a dual-core CPU, chances are you can set it to 4, 8 for quad-core, etc. Now, I'll just select where I want my file to be saved. Let's put it in the same Tutorial Project folder as everything else and name it Tutorial Final. Let's click Render and wait for it to finish. Depending on the format of your sources, the number of transitions, effects and clips you stacked on top of one another, the rendering time may vary. It's heavily CPU dependent on Kdenlive, Live, so the faster your processor, the smaller the rendering times will be. Ok, everything is done now. Let's watch that video.
You'll notice it looks smoother than when you previewed it in Caden Live. The final render will always appear smoother than the preview, which does not use the GPU, and as such is way slower than what the final video will look like. Ok, this should cover the basics. In the next part, we'll cover a few more advanced effects and transitions. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!